Good morning and welcome to Prayer at Breakfast this Wednesday, the 10th of March. Today's Gospel seems a repetition of the one we had last Sunday. It's strange, the clearing of the temple. And yet, every time you read it, you get a different angle out of it. And it's from a different Gospel this time. It's from Mark, and it's in, in typical Mark fashion. It's he came, he said, he did, he went. It's very da-da-da-da. So let's see what emerges from this gospel today. A reading from Mark chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 15. They came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, and you have made it a den of robbers? And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Isn't that strange? The Son of God, the self-revelation of God, goes to the very heart of the place where God was known to be present in the temple. And he does a wrecking job on it. He challenges the assumptions that the rituals have to be done a certain way and the animals could only be bought there with certain coins. And he challenges the man-made tradition of the temple and cuts to the heart of it. And says that they had lost the plot, that it was about a place of prayer, not a trading in religion. Buy the coin, to buy the animal, to sacrifice to the God beyond the walls where you may not go. And the area where the trading was going on was where the Gentiles, in other words, the Jews who had travelled from Egypt from all over, came to worship but of course there was no place for them so there was no room really for the stranger in that temple and yet in the temple of Christ of the the presence of God that we've come to know in Christ the startling thing is is he actually making that challenge in our time as well have we driven out people and brought in values that are not of Christ is his word really welcome at the heart of faith, traditions that have built up over generations and become hallowed? Are we really ready for the radical questions and radical challenge of Christ? Some thought for the day. So we pray for the church. I think the bishops are meeting today. Well, I know that made your day, but the bishops are meeting today. And I'm sure their concerns are going to be of money and the survival of the system. And may the word of God come into that gathering, giving both hope and challenge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we look to the future and to the church after this pandemic, Will we return to our old man-made traditions or will our houses of church, church and cathedrals be houses of prayer where those who have prayed during the pandemic and come to God in anguish and joy meet together? We pray, Lord, that when we return, our houses will be houses of prayer, of welcome, where no one is excluded. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You were appalled at the desecration of the temple because it was so exclusive of the Gentile, of the woman, the one who had no space in it because of that trading. And we pray for the outsider and the woman in your churches, permanently excluded in many instances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your heart is inclusion. 
your whole will, O Lord, was to draw us into the presence of God, where we are in the temple of our lives. Draw near to those who are suffering this day, who are sick, who are really facing big challenges health-wise, who are recovering for surgery, who are facing surgery, who are facing treatment, who are undergoing treatment, who are in hospital, who are planning to go to hospital, who are in pain, who are in anguish, who are in deep depression and turmoil. Draw these people into your presence, O oh Lord, and give them comfort this day, the comfort of your light and your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for teachers and all involved in making schools ready for a fuller return to school, that they will be safe places, safe from disease and from all that does not enable children flourish and staff flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the God of love get rid of in your life, in my life, anything that blocks us from an awareness of God's presence so that we may know the peace of God, the purpose of God, and the strength and joy that is the Spirit. And so go forth blessed in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.